Congratulations, and welcome to UC Berkeley. We're glad you're here. My name is Cindy Connors, and I'm the Computer Science Enrollment Manager in the EECS Department. That's Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Today, I'm going to tell you the top five tips to successfully enroll in the computer science classes you need. And if you're wondering about this photo, that's Professor De Niro teaching CS61A a couple years ago. As you can see, our classes are quite popular. I originally created this presentation last fall, and the majority of the information is still accurate and relevant. However, there are some changes in the Fall 20 enrollment environment that need to be addressed before you watch the rest of this video. First, in response to the rapidly changing health guidelines at both the state and university level, please be aware that any information that you see regarding mode of instruction is subject to change at any time. In many cases, our faculty are still working hard to determine the best way to meet the needs of all students. So again, you may see some changes in the mode of instruction. My best recommendation is to check back at the website classes.berkeley.edu regularly, even after you enroll in a class to see if any changes are made. We do normally uh, send email updates to students when we have to make changes that will impact the, their schedule, but it's still not a bad idea to keep monitoring classes.berkeley.edu on your own. Okay, so let's talk about how classes are structured and how class notes can help you. Many of the classes in our computer science department include multiple components. So that's a lecture, which is your enrollment section, and either a discussion or a lab, or sometimes both. Um, unfortunately, though, our enrollment system in Cal Central will list each component's information separately. And so here's how this would play out for students. If you look at the screenshot I'm displaying now, you see that on the left side, it says the mode of instruction is remote instruction. And you might think that this class is completely online. However, if you were able to scroll further down the screen, you would see that it actually has uh, discussion sections associated with it, some of which are being offered in person. So the way that we're trying to help students understand better holistically what's happening with the class is through class notes. Again, at classes.berkeley.edu, along the top of the screen, you see class notes, and if you click it, it expands out all the information that I key in for a class. And so you can see here, I've put a little bit more detail in for you regarding the class lecture will be synchronous, we'll have some recordings available for viewing later, but the discussion sections uh, will be offered both synchronous and some will be offered in person. You can uh, decide which to enroll in later. So be sure to keep your eye on the class notes to figure out in one place what's happening for the entire class. Okay, what else do I need to let you guys know about this? Mm. I think that's it. Oh, I know. Before you get too stressed about choosing exactly the right lab and discussion section, you're going to want to pay close attention to tip three later in this video, because in the computer science department, we use something that's called 999 sections, and we manage our enrollments a little bit differently than many other departments on campus do. So again, pay close attention to uh, tip three later on. Okay, so let's talk about all these modes of instruction and what does it mean? You see here that I have brought up what you should see, I believe, on Cal Central if you were searching for a class. And if you were to uh, click the drop down menu for mode of instruction, you would see all these choices. Probably, if you're a visual person, you want to go to berkeley.edu and just type in a search for mode of instruction. There's a website out there, that, your web page, that will um, tell you and has it all written out what these terms mean. 
I am going to attempt to talk you through it briefly here. Okay, the first thing you see is flex and see class notes for details. Here's what that means. Flex means that a single class will be offered with sections uh, both in person and online, which means if you're remote, you're not near campus and or for whatever reason you cannot attend the class in person, there is a way to take the class completely remotely and successfully com complete it. Uh, Flex also means though that we do also offer some in-person uh, sections and honestly they're usually mostly uh, discussion sections. So if you're near campus and you need to take an in-person section you can do that and again make it through the class. Hybrid. Now this says has in-person meetings. Well the difference between flex and hybrid is that if you are taking a hybrid class and I believe computer science is only offering one the semester so far. But the difference is you will be required to attend the in-person portion of the class until the professor tells you that something has changed and it's going completely remote. This ties directly to the chancellor's message about uh, after Thanksgiving all classes will be finished remotely. So you can expect to attend the in-person section of a hybrid class until Thanksgiving or until the uh, health guidelines mandate that we have to go completely remote. In-person instruction, that's pretty straightforward. It's exactly what it says. If you sign up for this class, it will only be offered in person, at least until health guidelines dictate something different. Um, and I believe, again, we're only offering one of those classes for fall 20 for all of uh, computer science. So your chances of having a, that class mm, are not so great, but you're welcome to take it if you want. Pending review means that we are still trying to figure out exactly what format the class will be held in. Remote instruction, mm, some people would call this synchronous remote instruction. So for these, it means you can expect that you are you will have to attend a class at a certain day and time uh, just online instead of going to a room. Uh, often remote instruction classes will record that remote, uh, at least the lecture piece of it, for playback later because we recognize that we have students coming from all over the world and we have to try to accommodate different time zones. So when you are searching for online classes, you probably want to look for remote instruction as well as web-based instruction. That's the last choice here. Web-based instruction is asynchronous, which is a fancy way to say you can take this class anytime. The lecture likely will be recorded only for playback when it's convenient for you and any activities or uh, discussion sections, again, will be structured in such a way that you're posting things on forums or other sorts of activities. You're not having to come together on a specific day and time to complete the class. Okay, I think that's everything I needed to let you know for fall 2020. Thank you so much for being brave and persistent and patient as we all work our way through uh, this challenging time. The remainder of this video will be the original presentation and I believe at the end of it I give you the information but I will tell you now. If after watching this video you still have questions about enrollments, you feel free to contact the advisors or you can send an email to me, Cindy Connors, the enrollment manager, and that email address will be cs-enrollments at berkeley.edu. Thank you again, everyone. Welcome to Cal, and we will get through this together. Enjoy the rest of the video. The first couple of tips are about error messages you may see when you try to enroll in a class. Tip one, department consent really means that the class is temporarily closed. This one is unique to the computer science department. 
Other departments don't use the setting that way. But with computer science, when we intend to offer a class, but we're unable to open it for some reason right now, we will set it for department consent. And you'll see that setting either on classes.berkeley.edu, or you could also see it within Cal Central if you go to enroll in the class and it kicks up an error message. The recommended action when you see this message is simply to be patient and periodically check back to see if the class has been opened for enrollment. When we're able to open the class, we will remove this setting and post to the EECS 101 section of piazza.com. Tip number two, stay within the unit limit. Hopefully, you've already learned that enrollments are handled in three phases at UC Berkeley. During phase one, undergraduate students have access to 13.5 units. During phase two, this bumps up to 17.5 units, and during the adjustment period, uh, all the units become available to students. It varies by college, but for the College of Engineering, that's uh, 20.5 units for the semester. The thing that trips most people up is that students forget that waitlisted classes count towards these upper unit limits. And so I get a lot of questions in the fall with students saying, oh, I can't enroll in this class, why not? And the reason often can be that you have a waitlisted class you've forgotten about, it's using some of the units for that particular phase. If this happens to you, the best course of action is Either be patient and wait for the next enrollment phase to start so that more units become available to you. However, if you're concerned about getting into the class or giving yourself the best position on a waitlist possible and you want to enroll in the current enrollment phase, you might consider dropping a different class uh, or a class that you're waitlisted for to free up enough units that you're able to enroll into this particular class that you want to get into. Tip number three, understand 999 sections. This tip is also unique to EECS classes. As you've probably figured out, most classes at UC Berkeley consist of a lecture and related lab and or discussion sections. By default, the enrollment system will only enroll you if there are open seats in all components of the class. So I have students contact me often and they'll be lecture seats available but they can't figure out why they can't get into the class, it may be that the discussion or lab section you've selected has no space available for you and that's why it pushes you to a waitlist even though you can see open seats at the lecture level. So in order to simplify enrollment for most computer science classes, we've created placeholder sections and we call these 999 sections. You'll notice that these sections do not have any location associated with them and they all take place on Sundays around midnight and the duration is about a minute. Now some students are confused by the fact that they can see the actual uh, discussion or lab sections in addition to 999 sections. The reason that we make the actual sections visible to you is for planning purposes. So while the enrollment system will force you to enroll into the 999 sections and the lecture, you'll still be able to see the other sections for planning purposes. And often students will ask me, well, how do I get into the actual sections? During the first week of classes, the teaching staff will reach out to you. Uh, it really varies from class to class. Some uh, teaching staff don't care which section you go to, as long as there are seats available. Other classes do care, and the teaching staff will send out links to online sign-up uh, web apps, or there's Google Documents sometimes that they use, Google Forms. So it just varies from class to class. So if you're signing up for a 999 class, just be patient. Someone will reach out to you with more information about how to actually get into the section that you want to get into. Tip four, know where you stand with reserved seating. During enrollment phases one and two, we set aside reserved seats for certain student populations. So what does that mean? Well, for most computer science classes, that means that we save seats for our declared majors to give them access to the seats they need to complete their classes on time so they can graduate on schedule. Once the adjustment period begins, the reserved seating 
caps come down and then the system will move people into any available seat based on the waitlist position. So what does this mean to you? It means that you should go to classes.berkeley.edu and look at the actual page for the class you want to enroll into. You can read the reserved seating rules on the left side of the screen under current enrollments. And if that's not so easy for you to read, you can also look at the reserved seat section in the middle of the page. There, it's the same information as just a bar chart to make it a little more user friendly. If you really want to get into a class, even if you don't meet the reserve seat capacity in phases one and two, you might consider using phase one units or phase two units to put yourself on the waitlist early. This will give you the best position possible so that when the reserve caps come down, uh, let's see, for fall 2019, that's gonna be August 19th. At that point, you will have given yourself the highest possible position on the waitlist that you can have and when the enrollment system automatically starts moving people into the seats, then you stand the best chance of getting access to space in the class. Tip five, monitor the wait list. Computer science classes are so impacted, the odds of you ending up on a wait list at some point are pretty great. So let's look at some tips to make sure that you can get into the class if possible. First, always have a backup plan. Don't worry about past experience if the class gets expanded. Every semester, the circumstances are different. So if you find yourself on a wait list, there are no guarantees that the instructor will necessarily expand enrollment. So I strongly recommend you have a backup plan. If you need help making a backup plan, feel free to reach out to your advisor or to a computer science advisor who can help you with that. If you're on the wait list and it's phase one or phase two, just be patient. The adjustment period this fall begins, or for fall 19, begins on August 19th. And so at that point, the reserve seating requirements come down and that's when you'll probably start to notice movement on the wait list. So if it's phase two and you're listening to this and you're not noticing much change in your wait list position, be patient and check it again on August 20th. Third tip is pretty handy if you're not already familiar with it. It's the 10% rule. So again, no guarantees that you'll get into a class. However, generally speaking, 10% of enrolled students will drop by the add drop deadline, which means the way to figure out if people always are coming to me asking, what are my chances of getting into a class? I recommend go to classes.berkeley.edu check the total enrollment capacity and calculate 10% of that, and then check your waitlist position compared to that number. If you fall within the 10% range, you're gonna have to be patient because the, remember, not everyone drops before the classes begin. So uh, if you're within that range, the odds are pretty good that you'll get in, but it might be during week four. And if you fall outside of that range, Mm, your chances are less likely, but you still might get into the class if the instructor decides to expand enrollment. And just a side note, because I'm making this uh, recording for incoming students who may not know, yes, if you are waitlisted for a class, you still should go to the class because you will be expected to uh, make up any homework assignments or any missed lectures uh, during that, that time period when you're still waitlisted. So we do try to clear the wait lists and expand enrollment as soon as we can, but sometimes it's, you know, we go right up until the ad drop deadline that's during week four of the semester. So at this point, you're just, please continue to go to the classes and act as if you were getting in so you don't fall so far behind. Okay, and another good hint for you, is there a time conflict? So understand that most Computer science classes are set up to allow time conflicts, but sometimes we have classes that do not. And here's what happens. If you have a time conflict and it's not permitted for a particular class, you'll end up on the wait list where you will stay indefinitely. Even if seats are available, you will remain stuck on the wait list. So my best recommendation there is go out to the Eeks 101 section of piazza.com. 
That's where we post information about the classes, so you can go there and see if time conflicts are permitted. I think actually you might be able to see that by looking at the class detail information through the enrollment process on Cal Central as well. I don't see screens like you see screens when you do enrollments, but I think you can see that same information there as well. Okay, last but not least, if you change your mind while you're on a wait list and you decide, oh, I don't want this class, remember to drop the class. I've had this happen every semester. Fortunately, it's only a few students each time, but don't let this be you. Students decide they don't want to take a class. They forget to drop themselves from the wait list. The night before the ad drop deadline, the instructor kindly says, oh, I'm going to expand enrollment and take everyone who's waitlisted into the class. And students get sucked into the class, and then the ad drop deadline passes, and now they're trapped. They're unable to drop the class. Maybe not drop it at all, and they certainly cannot drop it easily. So my last, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my last reminder for you there is if you're not going to take the class, drop off the wait list. All right, that's all we have. Thank you so much for watching these top five tips for getting into CS classes. If you would like more information about enrollments to computer science classes, again, I recommend you visit the EECS 101 section of piazza.com. That is our primary method of communicating uh, both from the enrollment managers and the advisors. So you get up to date information there. And the other place I would recommend is you can go to the Getting Into CS Classes page on the eeks.berkeley.edu website. And if you're not sure why did I get put on the wait list, there's some really good information there about our enrollment rules. Thank you for watching.